sugar, a billion dollar business to Australia. Almost all of its cane is grown here in Queensland, with the Great Barrier Reef right on its doorstep. When it comes to conserving the reef, a lot of work is being done out at sea, but there's also stuff happening right here at sugarcane farms like these, which are dotted all around the tropical coast. It's the runoff from these sugarcane farms, the pesticides, the herbicides, that are posing to be a huge threat to the future health of the Great Barrier Reef. Chris and Belinda have developed smart water sensors that remotely measure nitrate levels in farm lagoons. Nitrate can lead to more algae buildup and less coral diversity out on the reef. Yeah. That's where the light shines through and that's where you get your reading from. Their system, including a bunch of sensors and a computer in a waterproof box, helps them remotely secure more accurate readings around the clock and, crucially, gauge the effects of specific rain events. We might not have a lot of nitrogen leaving every paddock on every farm, but all it really needs is a little bit over a large area of land. Those marine systems, they haven't evolved with high nitrogen levels. So once that changes a little bit, you change the balance. One solution could be this herbicide spraying drone that zones in from above and targets hard to reach weeds, thus greatly reducing the amount of chemicals spread across a field. Often here, especially in the wet tropics, you actually can't get back onto the paddock, so it's too wet to be able to get onto. Or, as we have with sugarcane, it becomes too large, so the only way to get any product back onto it is to do it with an aircraft of some kind. The DJI drone has four radar sensors on board, so it can get close enough to crops without crashing. And the nozzles have been specifically designed to form just the right amount of liquid, so droplets don't blow off into the wind. Airborne contraptions are helping the reef in other ways. These three little bumps just there, Yeah. that means that this is live coral. Right, so you can infer just from the, the shape of the wave. Yeah. Dr. Karen Joyce uses drones equipped with sensors like spectrometers to capture detailed information unseen by the human eye. It measures the way, the way light is reflected or absorbed. So, for example, we see trees as green because they reflect green light. Different things on the reef reflect light differently as well. That helps us to understand the types of things that we have on the reef, but also how healthy they are. You just realise how small of an area the drone can capture. So that would be like 15 minutes work to do just that little bit there. And this only represents one of 3,000 of the reefs at the Great Barrier Reef. To better understand the scale and complex ecosystem of the reef, I've come to the epicentre of tropical marine research, the Australian Institute for Marine Science. Behold, the sea sim, one of the most advanced reef replicators on the planet. 33 tanks, more than 140 pumps, and over 42 kilometres of piping, all controlled with custom tech. And of course, I just had to have a nosy behind the scenes. The bits and pieces you see along the back wall here, they're what control our pH. They provide dynamic, active control of the processes occurring in the tank. And that means we get much, much better control, much tighter control of our seawater, so the conditions are more like what we actually see out on the reef. They've got taps, tubes, a giant orange snake. This enables us to control our temperature to within plus or minus 0.1 of a degree. We can create profiles, whether that be seasonal or daily. We can control salinity, so replicating freshwater plumes. Um, we can replicate contaminants, whether they be nutrients or pesticides, insecticides, a whole range of different parameters. The sea sim is able to precisely replicate the conditions of the Great Barrier Reef as it's found in nature. But it's also able to look into the future. What will the reef look like in, say, 50 or 100 years from now? We're looking at those mechanisms that make corals more thermally resilient. This isn't a solution. The, the solution is dealing with climate change and the carbonisation of the economy. We're just looking at ways of assisting this to enable those corals to survive until we find a solution to that bigger issue. Scientific facilities, drones, monitoring sensors. These are just some of the many efforts to importantly buy time for the reef. While seismic shifts are required to truly preserve this natural phenomenon, small actions can lead to big change. <laughs>